Hey guys, Ryu here and in this video we're going to be talking about a really important subject which is framing. Look, modeling is important, I know, but so is everything else in the design process. In our free Hard Surface Jumpstart course, you will not only feel more comfortable with hard surface modeling, but also confident with rendering and excited about your new game-changing portfolio. Link is in the video description, let's get started. Now, framing is really complex and involves a lot of elements, okay? So we have camera focal length, camera angle, camera elevation, then we have lighting, position of the subject in the frame, we have depth of field, we have background problems and something that needs to be solved in a frame, we have a frame within a frame, we have visual weights, so there are a lot of things that we could talk about and they're quite complex. Now, we're not going to be going super in-depth uh, into the subject because this video will be like seven hours long, but I'll try to explain the basics, okay, the, the, sh the very basics that you need to know to be able to create or kind of think about creating a better framing, all right? So first of all, let's talk about aspect ratios and focal length. Now, mostly in my uh, work, I frame things at 16 by 9 or 21 by 9, meaning the framing you see right now is 16 by 9, that's a regular monitor, or 21 by 9, which is a bit wider, so you can change it in here. So if you go here to settings, um, to this output and format settings, you can change it to 3440 and 1440. That's 21 by 9. Depending what you're framing or like what you're shooting, you know, you can change the framing ratio. Now, I would avoid square framing. Square framing is very difficult to compose and it's not really interesting because it's not dynamic. You see, the reason why, uh, for example, cinemas okay, have these ultra-wide screens is because picture is much more dynamic because you have a very wide screen and the screen height is not that, you know, is not that uh, long, right? So and that creates drama. And in one-to-one -one framing ratio, the framing is actually very static because it's a square. So try to avoid um, squared framing. I know it's tempting to do it for Instagram, but I would really recommend you play with wider framing. So at least, okay, at least three by two, or preferably 16 by nine or 21 by nine. Now, you need to understand that framing needs to follow the purpose, which means it needs to follow the shape of your object uh, or subject, it needs to follow the idea, the feeling. So it's not just a, you know, a rule that you need to use 16 by 9 or 20 by 9. No, you need to fit the framing to your subject. Now, in this case, for example, either 21 by 9 or 16 by 9 would work because our, our subject is a bit wide. You know, these rotors on sides and, you know, there's the middle section, etc. Right now, let's talk about focal length because it's quite important. In our case, focal length is 300 millimeters. OK. You can change your focal length here under camera as well. I'm using actually machine tools to do that, I'm just in page down menu. But if you don't have machine tools, you can simply click on a camera, go to camera and you can change your settings here. It's a telephoto lens, quite long and actually very long and it will compress the image. Okay, so now if you want to have something a bit more distorted, what you want to do is you want to you know, dial it down to maybe 60, maybe it's pushing about, let's say 35 millimeters, right? And you see that the feel is going to be completely different, right? It's very distorted and it's kind of like coming onto you, right? It's kind of like coming out of the frame because of the angle and everything is stretched and deformed because of the wide angle lens. I prefer to work with longer lens. I think it's a bit more um, personal and more intimate. So I really like longer lenses and just gives me a much more dynamic and aggressive sort of like isolated framing, okay? Another thing important in framing is going to be where you're going to place your object in the frame. If you don't know, there is a rule of thirds, so-called rule of thirds, when you can overlay uh, two lines horizontally and two lines vertically. Rule of thirds is a very basic rule of photography and framing images in general, so in art, where you want to position your subject in the upper left, right, bottom left, right, third of your image where the lines cross okay but it's not that simple and it really depends like for example in this case you can see that our model's face so to speak so the cockpit the canopy is slightly offset to the right 
top, right? So it's closer to the top right, but not really on top of the uh, thirds over there, right? So it's slightly breaking the rule, but the reason why I'm breaking the rule here is because I need to fit the rotors and I need to kind of compose the entire image. Also, my framing is slightly tilted. It's called Dutch angle to create a bit more dynamism and add a bit more kinetic energy to the ob to the image because this uh, you know this copter is moving and later on in photoshop i added an effect of spinning blades you can see it now here on the on the screen and it just simply sells the whole image with this blurred background right so it really depends on an object or your model or you know whatever else you have in the scene there's another thing very important in framing and it's negative space okay so positive space in this image would be the subject the copter Negative space is everything that surrounds it and sort of isolates it. Now, in our case, it's actually quite a busy blurred background with a lot of contrasty elements because it's a city being lit from the side by the sun. It's just simply building being blurred because if I turn this off, I can actually show you. If I go here, this is simply nothing else but a blurred city, okay? And of course, on top of there is a toning and all, you know, all that is happening. But the point here is that it creates a negative space. So negative space is everything that kind of defines your subject or your main subject in your photo, kind of surrounds them, okay? And knowledge of negative space and knowing how to operate with negative space is really important in framing. So we have a tire here on the left and two uh, on the right. Now you can clearly see that the tire has a face which is facing to the right if you're gonna consider that inner part of the tire that is a face of an object's so a front it's facing slightly to the right because it's kind of turned right so i'm giving it a lot of kind of like a breathing space here on the right side okay and i'm balancing this tire with slightly darker tires here on the right and the lighting that's been cast on the tire here on the main tire is the most important one so i'm focusing my lighting in a way to lit this tire really well so you know everything is bright there's other contrast you can see all the details but you can notice that the other tire here is all dim and dark because it's not important the only thing i'm using these two for is a visual weight so everything in photography or imagery has a visual weight to it color contrast sharpness etc it will create a visual weight you need to sort of imagine that what you see has a weight to it, okay, visual weight. Now what you want to do, you want to balance that weight. So if I'm going to have something on the left side, I want to more or less balance it on the right side. The trick is that not always you need to have an identical size of an object on the other side to balance weight. It doesn't work like that. So let me show you what I mean. Now the size of the object, it isn't important. Now you see here in this image, for example, that ship on the left and there's a logo on the right and there's a human on the bottom, right? Now, that human on the right is equally heavy as that ship. And let me tell you why. Humans as figures going to draw our attention immediately because we are drawn to human silhouettes. Secondly, it's very dark on a brighter background, so create a lot of contrast. Also, it's facing the ship, so they're in communication. You see what I mean? In between them, there is beautiful negative space. So even though this human is so tiny, he's creating a lot of visual pull because visually it is heavy or he is heavy, right? So try to wrap your hand around it. The visual weight of this text and this tiny human is equally heavy as the vessel on the left, right? And there's a space between them, beautiful negative space that creates this kind of like a, you know, calm sort of a feeling to it, okay? Now, usually it is a good idea to offset things in your image. So, for example, you can clearly see that this ship is to the left, the tire is to the left, the vessel here appears to be in the center, but it isn't, because if I draw a line here in the center, you know, the face of the vessel actually sticks past the center of the image, okay, past the half of the image. So it's sort of offset, okay, offsetting things in the image will create a lot of dynamism, okay, so please remember that this is important. This doesn't mean, however, that you cannot have symmetrical images. Now, the trick for symmetrical images is to create something that's really, really symmetrical. 
he can create an illusion of symmetry or almost near perfect symmetry by symmetrizing, for example, your sci-fi model and literally shooting it dead on, which means left and right hand side are almost identical. They're going to be tiny differences here. Like, for example, you see these tiny rods here. They have a different arrangement. So they're going to be tiny differences. Also, text is different on left and right. So they're going to be tiny nuances, but more or less the image appears to be perfectly symmetrical. So important thing to remember is when you want to go symmetrical, you make blood assure you're going to go symmetrical. Okay, not more or less symmetrical, symmetrical, because that's going to empower your image. If you're going to be kind of lazy symmetrical, so kind of symmetrical, but not really, that image will look off. The frame is going to look weak. Okay, so either you go symmetrical or you're going to offset the thing. Do you know what I mean? That's an example of clever offsetting, okay? Similar, kind of similar to uh, what was done in this image, but a little bit different because it's shot from below and also it's shot with a wide angle lens because you can see the distortion, right? The front is much larger and the back is much smaller. So the, the, the whole image is slightly distorted, okay? So it's a wider angle lens. And, you know, you can see clearly that the face of the object with the front of the object is offset to the left of the image, right? Not in the middle, to the left of the image. So when you're shooting something in Blender, it is really important to stop putting things in the middle of the frame because it looks boring as hell. Guys, I see this all the time and it's terrible, okay? Don't do it. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, okay? Watch this helmet, right? It's not in the middle. You would probably put it in the middle. Now, if you put this helmet in the middle, the entire right-hand side of the image would be rendered irrelevant. But let me explain why. The front of the helmet is here, okay? That's a face, and we can immediately see a face in that helmet because we humans, we look for faces everywhere, okay? You ever look to the hydrant on the street or the post box, it looks like a face? Exactly, so this is the same thing happening here. Now, that helmet has a front, okay? There are two eyes, and it looks this way, which means it looks to the left, meaning we need to leave here a beautiful breathing space for this helmet to live, okay? If you put it in the middle, so somewhere here, you will render this entire space here on the right hand side unimportant because there's no point for us to go there, okay? So in this image, I created conversation between the helmet, the text, and this kind of a white cast on the background, okay? Because that also has a visual weight. So these two elements, okay, balance the helmet. Even though there's nothing in here, you can do it with contrast and color. This is a very strong warm color, okay? And it's a text, will pull a lot of attention, so it's a strong visual anchor. This will off balance the helmet being to the left, to the right. So even if the helmet is offset to the right, this image works, okay? This takes time to develop this skill, it takes time to understand how it works, but keep practicing and you're gonna get good at it, okay? Now, the final thing in imagery and framing is your lighting, okay? Always look at your light. If you're going to change the camera angle, remember that the lighting will change. So if I'm going to unlock this camera from view and I'm going to rotate around my model and I'm gonna shoot it from the back, look what happened to the light, it looks like shit. I need to rotate my light with my camera, do you understand? So when you find the framing that you want to shoot, let's say we wanna shoot something like this, right? This is a garbage lighting. I cannot see anything, the canopy is black, it's it's melding literally with this frame here, with the, with the body. It looks awful, right? So, you know, this needs to be far more interesting, or maybe even framing like that, doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is that, you know, we need to move the light, okay? So you need to move the light around to fit your framing, okay? Don't forget to move the light around to fit your framing. People forget to do that. So what you can do in Blender, right? You can create multiple scenes. So let me show you. I'm gonna press zero on the numpad to go back to camera view. I'm gonna go here to this menu on the top, click here and you can create a copy of this scene. You can create full copy and you can name it scene two. So S2, right? Now I can flip between these two scenes. Watch, I'm gonna grab this camera. I'm gonna lock it to view, right? And I'm going to literally move around my, my model to the back, like here, okay? Let's say I wanna shoot from the top, something like that, right? Let's say, okay? Something like this, right? And I'm gonna unlock it. 
I can always come back to my scene number one. So simply click here. So the way I do it, I go here and I'm gonna go back to my scene one. Boom, see what I mean? So you can have multiple scenes in your Blender file without any problem. So when you move the lights in a scene two, you will not affect lights in scene one. Okay, you follow? So remember, when you change your framing, change your lighting because this is shit okay you need to adjust your lighting guys never forget this thing okay so let's sum it up in order to create really good strong framing remember about the rule of thirds remember about the focal length about the feel of the image about visual weight about distribution of elements in your frame about camera angle Okay, camera angle is also important. If you frame from the top, you're going to make the subject look tiny. If you frame from the bottom, so you shoot from a lower angle, shooting up, you'll create a stronger feeling. This is how, for example, CEO portraits are shot. Okay, they shot from the bottom to, to empower them, to give them more status. If you shoot kids, you're going to shoot them slightly from the top, or dogs, or pets, do you see what I mean? To make them more endearing. Sometimes what you want to do is you want to level yourself with the subject, okay? So, for example, like in the case of this helmet, okay, I'm shooting literally on the level of the helmet. I'm entering the world of the helmet, right? I'm in, in its world, on its level. You see what I mean? But sometimes you want to shoot something from the bottom, like this, for instance, okay? This is going to empower this drone. Look how strong this gun looks, right? It's empowered because it's above you. This is shot from the top and it's giving you like a panoramic view of the scene. It looks much softer, much calmer and not so aggressive. So angle is also important, okay? And then lastly, you know, lighting. Please remember that lighting needs to fit your framing. This is so important, okay? So don't be lazy, rotate the lights and fit it to your new framing. Now, the last thing is that if you're going to be creating a framing from a product like here for our masterclass collection, right? You need to bear in mind when you're framing that you're going to be adding something to it. Okay, so like, for example, in our case, I knew that I'm going to have to put our name, the name of the collection, and then I'm going to have to put some other elements to fill this space on the right hand side to balance the left. Also, I want to bring more attention to the right hand side than the left hand side, but everything needs to feel balanced. Okay, what you need to do, you need to kind of think and plan ahead on what you want to do and frame it accordingly, okay? So you need to place it. So in my case, I place it, it this, uh, you know, this DVD box on the left-hand side because I knew that I'm gonna be dropping this um, text on the right-hand side. So whenever you want to add some text or something else in Photoshop to your image, you need to plan ahead, okay? You need to, when you're doing, when you're framing in Blender, you need to think, okay, and plan, sort of visually put something in there and think okay i need space for the text so i need to frame to the left okay or to the right whatever so anyway guys hope this helps you out that's it for this video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one